buying a car now some of you guys might have some bad experiences with buying a car um, however my one and only car that I've ever bought I had a great experience with it and a lot of that had to do with my internet negotiation skills so basically internet negotiation is not just some high-tech thing that only young people should do everyone should be doing it Alrighty, so I hear it all the time. People always like to ask me for advice about buying a car, but one of the biggest mistakes that most people make is that they don't start early enough. They know that they want a car maybe by the end of the year, and they start looking the second week of December. Bad idea. So when I started my negotiation for this 2018 Elantra, I started about two months early. So I started emailing all these dealerships and stuff to try and get quotes and basically that puts me in their system as a potential customer. When they see that this potential customer is interested in engaging in emails and that type of thing, they know that I really want to buy a car and they really just want to seal the deal and get it done. Really it's about time invested. Once they start working with you and email you and continually have a, this conversation and dialogue with you, they've invested time in you. Yeah and they want to seal the deal. Um, so while you're working with, say, two dealerships like Mason was, you have two dealerships, they're both invested in you heavily and they're both ready to make the deal. That is a point of leverage that you have over the dealership, which you can use to lower the price by saying this, basically some version of said dealership will do it for this price, can you beat it? Then they drop their price and then they say, oh, this other dealership, they can do it for this price. And then you go back and forth as many times as it takes and Mason can yes. say, it was a lot of, so it took a lot of times. With my car purchase, like I said, I started around two months early and there were three Hyundai dealers that I was actually getting quotes from. And I actually leveraged all three of those dealers against one another. Every time you're like, this dealer will do it for X price. Most of the time they'll say, okay, well I'll do it for 250 or $500 cheaper. You use that price and then give it to the other dealer. And most of the time they will end up saying the same thing and basically it creates a positive feedback loop of you getting like $500 off at a time. Just again and again and again. So eventually you'll get to the point where the dealerships are just gonna say, if that's their real price, like if that's the quote they gave you, I can't go any cheaper. And then that's when you buy the car. Now another point that I have uh, is ask for free stuff. Now this might be a little uh, ambiguous, you might not really understand what I'm asking or saying here, but when I finally got my price down to as cheap as I could, I had done all of the dealership comparing and all that stuff, I kind of sat on it for a second and then I kept saying, hey, if, if I buy by this certain date, Will you give me a gift card? Will you give me an extended warranty? Will you give me free floor mats? Will you give me just anything that you can think of? They might do it. Maybe they'll knock the dealer, the dealer dock fee. Stuff like that, can it, it adds up. Hundreds of dollars at a time, it will eventually add up to thousands. So if you ask about it, you know, heck, I got like free food gift cards with my car purchase, it was crazy. Like I got a ton of just stuff and goodies with it just because I asked about it and had the time to know that, you know, Right. I can. And like the old saying is or whatever, you know, if you don't if you don't ask, you're definitely not going to get it. Correct. It doesn't really hurt anything to ask. My fourth point here I want to talk about is leave them hanging. So, I know it's not the nicest thing to do, but when you have that time available, like I had mentioned, if you give it several months of this process, you have the availability to walk into a dealership, test drive a car. They know you're interested but then walk away. What that hap what that basically creates is this thing they're like, like Drew had mentioned, there's so much time invested, they really want to seal the deal. Especially and Especially if you've been there exactly. in person, you know, if you send some emails back and forth, but when you go in person, that brings it up another level. They know you're really, you're a real person, you're really serious about it. Um, you know, so your physical presence there and then continued online negotiation as you go along which is what Mason yeah. did really gets them you know they're in their system and there's the salespeople and stuff they're they're ready to make a deal because they're spending time with you and they know that you are really a serious customer 
And finally, I'm going to circle back to my last point. This is probably the nicest thing about online negotiation and having that extra time is that you, once you finally get that quote that you're like, that's a steal, let me go for it. All you have to do is just print out whatever they've sent you over email. That's one of the biggest benefits actually about this online negotiation process is that you have a quote that you've looked over over email without people staring at you, without pressure uh, to buy the vehicle. You've looked at it, you've approved of it. All you have to do is print it out, take it to the dealership, and then they have to honor it because that is the quote that they said. In writing. In writing. It's not a verbal, you know, oh no, that's not what I said. I actually said this other thing that was a thousand dollars more expensive. It's in writing. It's, you know, basically can't be it's just disputed. And, you know, one of the things, we're actually going to make another video about how car dealerships can kind of shift the paperwork around and get more money out of you. Um, and that's one of the things that will happen if you don't do online negotiation. You might think that you're going to get a good deal, but you're really not because they're, they shuffle papers around and after you've been there for eight hours upon end, you're just like, sign it, screw it, just let me have the car. That's right. So where you can come, you can be ready with a fresh mind because when you got your car, I remember I was there, we just walked in, he already had the number negotiated. All he did was find, go find the sales lady. Um, walk straight in and we went straight into the, the you know paperwork and stuff right you don't have any of the you know the back and forth and the waiting and the setting there you know for hours and hours on end till you just can't stand it and you're just like i'll do anything to make this <laughs> yeah. to make this end you know you that was taken care of gradually over months times then when you actually physically in the dealership it was actually it's pretty quick if you just skip straight to and pleasant. signing I mean, papers and stuff. I just came in, test drove the car, right. looked at it, oh, this is good, signed the papers, done. It was a very, very pleasant experience. And I do want to talk about, you know, maybe why you should trust me. You might think, okay, well, I bought one car, you've bought 50 over your lifetime, whatever. So my deal on my Elantra, it's stickered for $20,100. And the price that I paid is $13,193 on plus taxes. So on the road, my price was $14,550. And I had free gift cards with that, so that knocks that down. Yep. I got a lot of free meals out of Red that. Lobster. So, it was <laughs> tasty. so really, you're, we were looking at almost like a 30% discount on a car that yeah, cost $20,000. Exactly. Nobody thinks that that's possible. Uh, and it, it, you know, it, we're not by any stretch of the imagination saying that that's possible for all cars, but by putting in, you know, effort and following these steps, you really set yourself up to get the best deal possible.